Let's quickly talk about the duty of good faith. So when is a director or officer not acting in good faith? Well, there's three general fact patterns that you're looking for. One is where the director or officer intends to cause harm to the corporation. Once again, this is very rare. And number two, it's very difficult to prove. The second one is where the director or officer acted in conscious disregard of a duty to act. First, we have to formulate some sort of duty to act. If you can't articulate some sort of duty to act, then the director or officer can't be uh, failing to act in conscious disregard of a duty to act. Secondly, uh, it has to be consciously disregarding this duty to act. That means the director should know that she has a duty to act in this situation and she fails to do so. Uh, the third general fact pattern we're looking for is where the director or officer knowingly acts in violation of a law, right? So the, the director or officer does something illegal or approves the doing of something illegal. Now, there's illegal and then there's illegal. Right. So if I tell my drivers that to deliver packages, you have to double park. I'm instructing them to do something illegal. I am probably not violating my duty of good faith to the corporation. Uh, on the other hand, if I tell my account executives that we should open up extra accounts in the name of our clients without the client's permission and charge them extra fees. I am probably violating the duty of good faith uh, to the corporation. Uh, there have been some questions about whether the duty of good faith is a separate fiduciary duty. Uh, some people argue that it is a subset of the duty of loyalty. Uh, some people argue that the duty of loyalty is really just a subset of the duty of good faith. It really doesn't matter. You can look at them as separate duties. Why? Because different fact patterns uh, implicate these different duties. So we know the duty of loyalty. We're looking for some sort of conflict of interest. We're looking at self-dealing or a kickback fact pattern or a corporate opportunity fact pattern. And we know the standard of liability for those type of fact patterns under the duty of loyalty is that you have to prove fairness or you have to show ratification. Uh, with respect to the duty of good faith, as we just discussed, you're looking for three general fact patterns. And if you uh, engage in these type of activities, you have violated your duty of good faith to the corporation. If you're intending to harm the corporation, that's a violation of the duty of good faith. Uh, and you will be responsible for any harm you cause to the corporation. If you fail to act in conscious disregard uh, to a duty to act, once again, you are violating your duty of good faith to the corporation and you will be liable for any harm that your failure to act cause the, the corporation. And uh, if you act or approve some sort of action in knowing violation of the law, you will be liable for any harm that is caused to the corporation by your actions. Let's talk about waste. It's a cause of action. Uh, if we want to frame it as a duty, we could say the duty not to waste corporate assets. I like to think of it as burning money or throwing money away. I mean, it really has to rise to that type of level of waste for the directors or officers to be liable for wasting corporate assets. And the standard is a very difficult standard to meet. No rational business person under the same circumstances would have made the same decision. This is not a reasonable person standard. What would a reasonable person would have done? No, no, this is no rational person. Not one rational business person would have made the same business decision. So if the board of directors makes a decision or an officer makes a decision, and then one of the shareholders complains that that decision was wasting corporate assets. It looks like a waste. Turned out to be a really bad decision for us. We lost a lot of money. That's waste. And the question is, would no rational person have made this decision? That's a very tough standard for the shareholder plaintiff to meet. It's very protective of the decisions of the directors and the officers. Uh, there's an important exception, throwing money away. What if you donate? What if the corporation donates money to legitimate charities? Uh, most 
corporate laws have uh, an exception that says that this is within the powers of the corporation and therefore it is not waste. And even if it's anonymous, it used to be a long time ago that if you made a donation, uh, some of the shareholders might challenge that donation as waste and you as a director would say, well, it's not waste because it is good for the corporation. It's good for uh, our image. We make this donation, people see it, and it's good for our image. But what about anonymous donations? You can't make that argument. You can't say it's good for our image because it's an anonymous donation and therefore it doesn't help our image at all. Well, most corporate laws, as I say, allow for donations to legitimate charities. This is within the corporate powers and it is not waste. So you might ask, well, what might be waste then? Well, there are some cases out there that I would say involve what we call past consideration. We have an employee or a director or an executive officer that works for the corporation for a very long period of time and they either die or they resign. And if they resign, they retire. And then after they retire, the corporation says, ooh, this director or officer or employee was such a good employee that now in their retirement, we're gonna give them some sort of extra bonus. Think about that. What are you getting in return for that bonus? Nothing. And so there might be a good waste claim. Or we could see the same thing when an employee dies and you say, oh, this employee has been such a great employee uh, and now this employee has died and uh, his or her spouse is left without money. Let's give some money to the spouse. Well, this is giving money away. You're getting nothing in return. Uh, now, you can make arguments. You can say, if we do this, then we get uh, better uh, 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 employee relations. Our other employees see us doing this and they feel better about working for us and they'll work harder for us. You can make those arguments, but those cases are out there.